transportation as to what it would be used for and so forth? No, sir. The best that the general was able to induce from the, the senior staff officer was, after all, we are not barbarians. And that was the way he said it. <clears throat> now, uh, after three days, I believe you said you remained at Orani. Uh, where did you go? Uh, the second day, General King and General Jones were taken in a passenger automobile to Camp O'Donnell. The third day, the remainder of us were taken uh, by truck, our own little group there, uh, a distance up the road toward San Fernando. And there, a stop was made, and a Japanese uh, higher in rank to the driver of our truck took the truck, and we marched the final uh, four or five kilometers to San Fernando. There we were put again, herded into a large uh, building that had formerly been a uh, cattle uh, warehouse, corral, and we were kept there for about three hours when we were loaded upon in sugar box cars at the station at San Fernando on the uh, 20th of March. 1942, and landed in our headquarters. Numerous such leaflets were dropped uh, all over the lower portion of Bataan. This leaflet was folded up in an empty beer tin, which carried a label asking the finder to give it to his Excellency, Major General Jonathan Wainwright, and each can had a one inch wide and two foot long white ribbon and red ribbon attached to it. What does it say? I'd it, like to offer this in evidence, sir, and then photostat it for the record. No objection the defense. No objection, but I'd like to see it. Yeah. Will the record show that exhibit 419? 419 is accepted. Accepted. Now, would you just uh, read the portion with reference to the treatment of prisoners of war? Yes. <laughs> Your Excellency, and down below, there is a paragraph which reads, accept our sincere advice and save the lives of those officers and men under your command. The international law will be strictly adhered to by the Imperial Japanese forces, and your excellency and those under your command will be treated accordingly. And I think General Homer wrote that. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. I request that that remark be stricken. It is signed, sir, Commander in Chiefs, the Imperial Japanese Army and Navy. Now, uh, just one other question concerning the march. Did you personally see any time uh, while you were on the route of the march victims of any atrocity? Yes, sir. Will you tell us where and when you witnessed? You saw them. Between Orani and San Fernando, uh, I saw bodies lying on either side of the road, uh, portions in the, of the sh 
shirt and breast and back in some cases blood stains. I didn't see the men when they were killed, but they had been bayoneted or spitted upon a knife of some sort, obviously. These bodies were lying alongside the road. You didn't see these atrocities yourself? I saw the bodies, yes, sir, but, but I didn't. you didn't see the atrocities? No, sir. Now, uh, I'd like to go to Camp O'Donnell for a moment. <clears throat> at any, t uh, let me ask you this. Uh, how long were you at Camp O'Donnell? I was there from from Monday the 13th of April until June 1st, 1942. When you arrived at Camp O'Donnell, did, uh, did an officer address the group that you were in? Yes. The captain commanding the camp, whose last name was Sunyosh, Sunyosh, T-S-U-N-E-Y-O-S-H-I, addressed the camp. He was a captain. He had a, an interpreter who looked to be a, uh, as you were, who spoke very uh, poor English. When the captain addressed us, he talked for quite a period, then would pause, and the interpreter would interpret in one or two short sentences. Just of his remarks. The gist of his remarks, sir, were that the American forces <coughs> were beneath contempt that we were only alive because of the beneficence of the emperor, that the war might last a hundred years, but that it would continue until the Japanese empire had beaten us. At that time, sir, Major Wade Cochran and numerous other prisoners. Now, I want to ask you one question. Uh, with reference to Red Cross supplies, did you, while you were at Camp O'Donnell, at any time see an attempt made to bring into Camp O'Donnell Red Cross supplies? Yes, I did. When was that? Uh, and tell us what happened. It takes a bit of time to look up the exact dates. I, I don't I can, care if you can tell approximately the month. Yes. Uh, during the period of time that you were there, yes, that would be all right. It was approximately the uh, 18th or 19th of March. That a... You said uh, March. Uh, of, uh, as you were, of uh, May 1942, sir. Now, will you a, just tell us what you saw? Yes, I saw a truck arrive at the gate at Cabana de Juan, which was, uh, as you were, at Camp O'Donnell, which was loaded with foodstuffs and boxes marked with a red cross <coughs> containing medical supplies. Uh, it was driven up by Filipinos uh, representing the Philippine Red Cross, and it was not permitted to enter the camp, but was turned around and sent back to Manila. Now, while you were at Camp O'Donnell, did you personally witness the mistreatment of any prisoners of war? Yes, sir. Uh, while at Camp O'Donnell, I was questioned on three occasions and was offered an opportunity to uh, come to Manila and... Uh, Did you give the date on this? Yes. This was while you were in uh, Camp O'Donnell? Mm -hmm. 
approximate date and month all and right. year. That's perfectly all right. This, this would be sometime early in May of 1942. Uh, the staff officer who questioned me spoke very good English and offered me a job with the Propaganda Corps in Manila. What was the question? The question was whether you saw the mistreatment of any prisoners of war while at Camp O'Donnell. Yes. Will you confine uh, your remarks to that? Place? Yes. Uh, I saw numerous individuals beaten by guards for uh, no, no reason that I know. Perhaps they had gone into a, a forbidden area, although we understood we could go anywhere with